Tina Kutu. We saw last video the reasoning behind product terms and some terms being converted into truth tables. In this video, we will take that underlying logic and formalize it as common forms of Boolean equations. This table summarizes the min terms and max terms for a three input equation. The same patterns would hold for two input, four input, or any number input equations, and the number of rows in the table would scale accordingly. We'll just look at three input examples here because it is a manageable size. To have a min term or a max term, you must have all input variables present within the term. For example, with three inputs, the expression x prime or y could not be a max term because it uses only two variables. Min terms are product terms, featuring the AND operation between all of the literals. In the table, you don't see the middle dot written explicitly, but we are still ANDing here. Max terms are SUM terms, featuring the OR operation between all of the literals. A useful memory trick to remember which are min terms and max terms is to look at how much space is needed to write the expressions. Min terms need a small amount of space, Max terms need a large amount of space. That's a helpful trick, but it's not the reason for the names. The origins are hazy, but as best as I can tell, the name min term comes from the idea that an AND operation produces a true result a minimum number of times. There is one and only one case where you get an output of one. Conversely, the name max term suggests that the OR operation produces a true result a maximum number of times. In fact, there is just one special combination that would output zero. As you can see in these columns, there is a shorthand notation for writing these min terms, lowercase m, and max terms, uppercase m. The subscript next to each comes from the decimal representation of the input variable binary code associated with it. For example, what is binary 101 in decimal? It is 5, so the subscripts here are 5. If using shorthand notation, it's important to clearly indicate the number of input variables. The min term for M5 would be different if we had four input variables, for example. Over these next two slides, we'll use the exact same truth table to write Boolean equations, but from one, we will extract the min terms and from the other, we will extract the max terms. We'll find that each form represents the same logic. They must, since they come from the same truth table, but the resulting equations look very different. First, let's explore min terms. Min terms are associated with ones in the output column. Why ones? Because AND logic has a unique case for the output being true. Here, there are three ones, so we'll have three min terms. The min term from the top row is x prime, y prime, z prime. Why? Because if we sub in this row's input values, all variables equal zero, that is the unique case where this product term outputs one. From this next row, the min term is x prime, y prime, z. And our last min term is from this row and is x, y prime, z prime. How do we decide which variables are complemented? When dealing with min terms, an input value zero means the variable is complemented, and an input value of one means the variable is uncomplemented. Note that if we select any set of inputs that make any one of the min terms true, this OR operation makes the final output true. We can write this equation in shorthand. One method is to use the appropriate lowercase m's, all ORed together. The subscripts are dictated by the binary code that gave us the midterm. For example, m4 comes from this row. This input code would convert to decimal as the number 4. Note the importance of function notation here, which allows us to see that there are three input variables. We could use an even shorter notation. Here, the Greek letter sigma indicates that we are summing everything inside the parentheses. 
Sigma begins with S, just like sum. That is why the explicit plus signs are needed here. The numbers listed are the same as those in the subscripts on the line above. Any of these forms are acceptable ways to write these equations. You will likely see the top form most often because it is more explicit, but you may find the others more efficient. Our task is nearly the same on this slide, but now we are building an equation with max terms. As we saw last video, each step of the logic here will be flipped from min terms. So instead of looking for ones, we look for zeros in the output column. From each of these rows, we can write one max term. The first max term is x or y prime or z. What is the only set of values that would cause this to output zero? x equals zero, y equals one, and z equals zero. See how this max term comes from this row? With max terms, a complemented variable connects with a one on the truth table. As one more example, let's look at this row. Here, x equals one, y equals one, and z equals zero. Therefore, the associated max term is x prime or y prime or z. We repeat this process for all the other zeros on the table, so we end up with five total max terms. To complete the equation, place each max term within parentheses, then and them all together. Note how if any of the max terms equals zero, then the entire AND operation equals zero. There are shorthand notations here as well. We can use capital M's with subscripts, all ANDed together. Again, note the necessity of function notation to indicate the number of input variables. We can also use this last notation. That symbol is the Greek letter pi. Pi and product both start with P. So this indicates that we are multiplying each of the max terms indicated by these numbers. Between the min terms and max terms, which gave us the shortest equation? Here it was the min terms. Why? Because there were three ones in the output column and five zeros. Therefore, there were three min terms and five max terms. So for other situations where there are more true outputs, the max term representation could be more efficient. Those two equations we just developed are in canonical form. The first one using min terms is canonical sum of products or CSOP form. The name sum of products tells us that we create product terms first and then sum those together later. The term canonical means that we are using every input variable within each of the product terms. The second one, using max terms, is canonical product of sums, or CPOS form. The name product of sums tells us that we create sum terms first and then and those together later. Although they don't look it at first, these equations are logically identical. We could take the time to apply Boolean laws and rules to convert one to the other and prove their equality. Or even simpler is to realize that they came from the same truth table, so they must be equal. Any Boolean function, which means any logic statement in the world, can be expressed using either of these canonical forms. There are many, many other ways we can write this logic. In fact, an unlimited number of equations, but these are the two forms taken directly from the truth table. CSOP uses the ones to make product terms. CPOS uses the zeros to make some terms.